So man is a spirit. He has a soul. He lives in a body. Now listen carefully. The voice of the spirit is the conscience. The conscience. The voice of the soul is the mind or the emotions. The voice of the soul. The voice of your body is feelings. The voice of the body is feelings. The voice of the ma of the soul uh, is your mind or your emotions. The voice of the spirit is your conscience. That's how the Bible tells you forgive people, but sometimes people rough, rough handle you and you don't feel like forgiving them. You can even say I forgive you. Then some more times I change my mind. The way I'm feeling, eh? Look. Don't come close to me. Because your feelings have taken over your spirit. Your spirit knows you should forgive. But your feelings have overwhelmed the voice of your spirit. And you are sowing to the flesh. And the resultant effect of that unforgiveness will result in bitterness. And it may end up even in murder. So that's why you don't yield to the flesh. Because it will bring you to corruption. You yield to the spirit. And when you yield to the spirit, your body feels cheated. Let it be cheated. Let it be cheated. Your body feels cheated. Sometimes you feel so cheated that you even cry. Cry, but let the spirit win. Because he that so to the spirit shall reap life eternal. Am I teaching? Yeah. So that's why we've got to yield to the spirit. The voice of the body is feelings. Your feelings are not a right guide. Don't be led by your feelings. Don't follow your feelings. The spirit functions by knowing. And of all the three components, it's only the spirit that generates something. Every other part of man, quote and unquote, will need to receive the process. The spirit generates. That's why you have the Holy Ghost in you today. The spirit functions by knowledge. That is why you will know that you may know the things that are freely given to you of God. When I got saved, my feelings did not change. When I got saved, my feelings did not change. That's why some people, after they are born again, it's easy to deceive them and tell them God has not forgiven you and they start confessing. Because when you are saved, it's not a feeling something. Your feelings don't change. When you are saved, you still don't feel any different. Because salvation is not a body stuff. Salvation is a spirit force. It's a spirit reality. Your body will not change. When you got born again, you still remember how to ride your bicycle. You received Christ. You went out, climbed your bicycle and rode home. Because your mind didn't change. The real change took place in your spirit. Then after your spirit is changed, your spirit begins to work on your mind and on your body. So that's why those who want to feel something when they are born again may never be sure they are born again. Because it's not feelings. But you know it. So that's why to be born again, there's need for teaching. Because teaching will not make you know beyond your feelings that you are born again. Hallelujah. When I got saved, I knew that God has become my father. I knew that my sins were forgiven. When I speak in tongues, I know I'm speaking by the spirit of God. So the spirit functions by knowledge. Usually, you will not be able to explain it in A, B, C, D, E, F, G. But, you know, um, you will know that something has happened inside. Now, the soul functions by reasoning. The soul functions by logic. By reasoning. By asking questions. You logically look at things. You look at things logically. But your logic cannot see that there will be coronavirus 2020 March. Where the world will be locked down. So because all your mind does is logical calculations. You have already calculated 2020 was going to be your best year of investment. January, you took all your capital and invested into a business. 
and then February, all the salary you have, you push into that business because you have logically calculated and projected. Then March, bam, the whole world locks down. All your investments went down the drain. Why? You are led by logic. A logic cannot see the unseen. That is where weather forecast fails. Most times the weather forecasters will forecast that the, 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 the flight will have turbulence. And before we take off, the pilot will say this plane, as we're taking off, we're going to have a lot of, 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 of bumpy ride throughout the flight. And sometimes I sit down in that plane and I say, in the name of Jesus... I have dominion over the things in the sky, on the ground and under the ground. I'm in authority here. So turbulence, I command you to move now. Move. And I command you the air and the clouds to give me a comfortable ride in Jesus' name. And we take off on that flight, not one turbulent till we land. Because he gave us analysis logically and I superseded the analysis by superimposing the supernatural. So sometimes you can have analyses that are correct, but unseen forces can interfere. And those unseen forces are under your command. That's the superiority of the man that is born of God. So it's everyone that is born of God. It's like the wind. You cannot tell where it's coming from. You cannot tell where it's going to. But you hear the sound of his impact. Am I talking to somebody here? Your life is not subject to people's predictions. No, your life is in your hand. You shall have what you say. I thought somebody would shout, I'm in authority here. Let me hear you say it one more time. Let me hear you say it one more time. That's the limit of logic. All the financial analysts globally were, met their Waterloo last year. March, boom, the whole world shut down. Economy shut down. Politics shut down. Government shut down. Medical science shut down. All of these are fields of logic. They are fields of human discovery. They are fields of intellectual, intellectual activities. Expertise. Professionals who are accurate to the dot, yet unforeseen circumstances render their intelligence moribund morbid only men of the spirit some of us foresaw we couldn't articulate it in grammar but we knew something was coming and we began to prepare every one of you remember we were teaching and instructing you in things that were about to happen but we couldn't put our fingers on because the spiritual man knows all things. So we were not shocked. And we just continued doing what we were doing as if nothing was happening. Until everything finished, nothing happened to us. We were not ruffled because the spiritual man knows. All the analysts were analyzing and calculating and prophets that are led by their senses were busy prophesying. Is it prophesying or prophylying? That's why some of them have lost ministry. Because after everything, their customers don't see why they should go back. In India, idols have been homeless. They carried all their shrines and threw them on the street. Useless. Idiot. Idiot. You're occupying space without paying rent. When it is time for you now to pay your rent, you didn't have a... Ah, they threw away their idols. There will be more reasons to throw more idols. You are not saying a good amen? I am teaching good this morning. 